Google search GMAT point free tests. Click on the first link. Click on GMAT daily tests. Here you can take short GMAT tests in an exam interface. After submitting your test, you can view detailed solutions. Hello and welcome to GMAT point, Krakow GMAT preparation. In this video, we are going to discuss on how to score a Q51 in the GMAT. So first we will go through what the Q score is, then what a Q51 means, what are the several truths and myths about Q51 and then we will be sharing 5 tips as to how to score a Q51 in the GMAT. So let's get started. So first, what is the Q score in the GMAT? The score out of 800 that a person receives in GMAT uh, comes from two components, the verbal score and the quant score. This is not a simple addition or subtraction. This is a weighted score that GMAT calculates and no one knows how they calculate. So the quantitative score is called the Q score. This Q score is a scaled score that you receive out of 51. You can receive a score from 6 to 51 in quant. So 51 is the highest possible score in quant and a Q51 basically means that you are scoring the highest possible score in the quant in GMAT. This is what Q51 is all about. Now you must be thinking that you need to get all questions right to get the highest possible score in GMAT. No, it's not right. You can get some questions wrong and still end up with a Q51 score. No one knows what the GMAT, how the GMAT calculates the score and uh, it's not necessary to solve all the questions right to get a Q51. Nevertheless, you should try to get all of them right in order to maximize your chances to get a Q51. The second thing about Q51 is that 3% of students who take the GMAT score a Q51. So even if you end up with a score of Q51, you won't receive a 100 percentile you will receive a 97 percentile even with a Q51 score in the GMAT and this percentile is only in the quantitative section not the overall score or the verbal section. So this was all about Q51. Now that you know what the Q51 and the Q score means, let us move ahead and see some of the tips that you should keep in mind while preparing for the score. So let's look into the tips. The first step is that you shouldn't leave out any single topic or subtopic. If you are aiming for a score of Q49 or Q50, you can leave out a couple of subtopics uh, which you are not very comfortable with and which do not have a high chance of coming in examination. However, if you are aiming for a Q51, you are not at the liberty to leave out certain topics because if at least two easy questions come from that topic and you miss them out, then uh, GMAT will penalize you heavily for that and you won't end up with a 51 score. So you shouldn't leave out any topic, you should at least know the basics. Even if you don't go into details, know the basics of the topic. Second is do not get the easy questions wrong. Well, no one knows how GMAT marks you, what are the scaled scores of each of the questions that you attempt. But for sure GMAT penalizes you more for getting easy questions wrong. So make sure that if you see a question that seems easy to you, that you might have practiced sometime in the past, do not hurry through the question. Take additional 3 or 4 minutes to take your time and solve the question and get it right. I am not telling you to revise after solving the question but what I am suggesting is make sure that you don't hurry through the question because easy questions can still be tricky. You might have missed a sentence or a word which changes the entire answer of the question. So do not get the easy questions wrong. GMAT penalizes heavily for the easy questions and you might stand a chance of not getting a Q51 just because getting one or two easy questions wrong. The third tip is to distribute your time accordingly. GMAT has 31 questions in 62 minutes, which roughly translates to one question in two minutes. But remember that all questions don't take two minutes. Some take more than two minutes, some take two minutes and some take less than two minutes. You should distribute your time according to your strengths and weaknesses. If you find that arithmetic is something that you are very comfortable with, you should make sure that it is your strength and you spend a lesser amount of time in that topic and spend more time in the topics which you are not that comfortable with. Maybe say probability or permutation and combination. Similarly, if you feel that you are more comfortable with PS and not very comfortable with DS, by PS I mean problem solving and uh, DS is data sufficiency, make sure that you spend less than two minutes, probably one and a half minutes in PS questions and more than two minutes in a DS question. These are the strategies that you test when you are taking your mocks. Fourth 
DS questions are inherently tricky. Do not assume any information. Make sure that you have a plan and you stick to it. Our brain is mostly uh, used to solving problem solving questions because that's what we are used to in our schools and university level examinations. But DS is a different type of question and which we are not usually accustomed to. That's why these questions tend to be tricky. Do not assume any information. Make sure that you have a definite plan as to how you are approaching a question. DS questions are not about uh, just going in and solving a question like PS. In DS, you need to have a proper approach. And only then will you be able to solve the DS questions correctly. We have made an elaborate video on the entire quantitative section in the GMAT. It's a two or three hours long video. Make sure you follow that video. In that video, we have elaborately covered as to what should be your approach and what should be your mindset while solving a DS question. And we have ample amount of examples of DS questions in that video. We will include the link to that video in the description section. Make sure that you check that video out. Now, the fifth tip is that often when we practice, we tend to practice only DS questions at one go or maybe only PS questions at one go because that's how the questions are available in the question banks and the books. But what happens in the examination is that a DS question comes and then a PS question comes and then back to a DS question or maybe up to two PS questions there is another DS question. This what happens in this way is that our brain is not accustomed to solving DS and PS alternatively. The PS questions and the DS questions require very different approaches and it takes some time to settle into one of them. So what we suggest is when you are taking examinations, make sure or when you are practice, make sure that you have a system in which DS and PS comes together. Do visit GMAT point portal and we have our daily targets. In daily targets, we give five questions each day. And the best thing about these daily targets is that there's a good mix of PS and DS questions. So maybe the first question is PS, the next question is again PS, but the next question is DS, DS and PS. We have all possible arrangements that uh, will help you get used to the system in which your brain gets wired as to how to solve PS and DS questions alternatively. And this is a very important point. Often candidates uh, ace both the DS questions and the PS questions, but when they come in an examination pattern, they tend to lose them. So make sure that you have a good practice of solving these questions alternatively in an exam environment. Also, as I mentioned, do check out the daily targets. We will be including the links in the description section of the video. The daily targets are short five minutes test and you can give those tests in the exam environment. Also, we have a video on top 50 quant questions for the GMAT. This video has questions and video explanations of all these 50 questions for the GMAT. And these are really a good collection of videos. And this is really a very good collection of questions. Make sure that you check this video out because if you are starting with your GMAT preparation, this will serve as a good starting point for your preparation. And even if you are towards the end of your preparation, this will actually help you solve 50 more questions, which are high quality questions. So in this video, we mostly discussed about what the Q51 score is and what is required of us to score a Q51 score. Hope you like this video and found this helpful. Thank you. Do check out our B-School call predictor. Enter your details to know your chances of getting calls from top Indian and international B-schools that accept a GMAT score.